After he retired, Don and his wife, Jen, decided to help out their struggling community, setting up shop on an industrial estate. Don, this isn't a small little site, is it? No. This is our warehouse. Don and Jen founded Cornwall's first independent food bank. It's now one of the biggest in the country. This will provide a family of two with a breakfast for six days, a lunch for six days, and an evening meal for six days. How many families are you feeding from here, Don? Somewhere in the region of between four and 500 families a month. I get dads that can't eat for three days to feed his children. We, we have families who come in and say, can we have food that we don't need to cook? Because they haven't got enough money to put in their meter. And we're standing here, and if you went up on the roof, you could see a beach, but there's children in this town that's never been there. No. Yep. When Don and Jen started the food bank 12 years ago, they were serving 72 meals a month. Now it's a staggering 14,000. Hundreds of families depend on the food bank. It's the scale of what you're doing here that I find particularly, I was going to say overwhelming, but it's quite humbling as well. I can't do it without people giving me this. I can't do it without 74 volunteers. Forgive me for doing this, Don, but you're talking to us now and your beloved wife, Jen, has just passed away. Her funeral is tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you still wanted to talk to us. She would want me to talk to you because she was part of this. I know Jed would want me to tell people the hurt, the deprivation, the constant worry of where am I going to get next week's money from. It's a lot of weight on those shoulders. But I wake up every morning and I say in my prayers in the morning, please, Lord, help me to make a difference to somebody today. And that's it. That's what I do. Then I want to carry on. In Jen's memory. I'm going to follow carefully. <laughs> Perhaps Cornwall's reputation as a sunny holiday haven might be a dangerous mask making it too easy to overlook the fact areas of Cornwall are actually among not only the poorest in Britain, but the whole of Northern Europe. For a long time, there was some graffiti up around here that's since been removed, but I do think it was very pertinent and appropriate. And it said something like, Cornish lads are fishermen and Cornish lads are miners too. But when the fish and tin are gone, what are the Cornish boys to do? For me, Don's a total hero. He and his team of brilliant volunteers deliver food all over the Camborne area. During the pandemic, demand began soaring as the hospitality and tourism industries were hit hard. You're a food bank delivery guy. That's extraordinarily kind of you. Thank you so much. You're not the typical looking person that one imagines is a client of a food bank. No. My recent background is hospitality at Running Hotels. Running? Um, running Hotels as a hotel manager. Is this a little extra help or is it a critical lifeline? A critical lifeline. Yes, I want to work. Of course I do. I just all got a bit pear shaped at the moment. How many jobs have you gone for in the last few months? In the last six, probably, in the last six months, probably in total 250. Speaking from personal experience of being unemployed for just over a year, I found it hard to step outside the door. Mm -hmm. so I've become a bit, bit of a recluse in the last few days or the last few weeks. You know, even having shaves an effort. Thank you, Guy. Good luck to you, all right? Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think the future holds? We're trying to gear up because we know people are going to be 
in a long-term winter struggle. And if we get a real bad winter, how are they going to afford their electric, gas, heating? And to be honest, we can't do any more. You know, we haven't got a bottomless financial pit. We need to buy food for people. I've done what we can. Wages here are low, up to four pounds an hour lower than the national average, while poverty and unemployment in Camborne is just too high. And it's often the young who are being particularly hard hit 